Hey guys, welcome back. If you have been following along with my anxiety toolkit series, you know how essential it is to have reliable herbal allies for when you are in the thick of anxiety attacks and stress and insomnia. So today I am diving in to my absolute favorite herb, probably the thing that I use most often, passion flower. So I myself have anxiety. At its worst, it can be pretty debilitating and passion flower is something that brings me back to feeling normal again on my worst days and I am very excited to share why. So in today's episode, we are going to cover its medicinal properties, how to use it effectively, and even how to grow it at home. If you're new here, my name is Kristen. I'm an herbalist and I am here to help you learn how to use herbs to feel better in your body. If there was an herb that was my best friend, passion flower is it passiflora incarnata also called maypop or passion fruit passion vine sometimes wild apricot there are so many varieties of passion flower one of them actually being the plant that produces the fruit for hawaiian punch this plant is so cool and it has these big beautiful alien looking flowers if you ever see it like they're straight out of avatar although the flowers are so so beautiful that's not really where the medicine is of course there is medicine and beauty so they still bring joy and awe and that can be soothing as well but mostly the phytochemical medicine is in the leaves and the vine passion flower is a nervine it's a sedative it's a hypnotic it's an antispasmodic and it's most commonly used to relieve anxiety and nervous tension and david hoffman he says that passion flower can be used whenever an antispasmodic is indicated, like in the case of Parkinson's disease and even seizure or hysteria. It is indeed also a potentially valuable treatment for things like epilepsy, tremors, and muscle spasms, really anything where the nervous system is hyper aroused. And although it can be sedating, it can significantly decrease daytime anxiety without making you drowsy, so it's really great for students, workers, and anyone dealing with stress. One of the reasons passion flower is so beneficial to the mind for stress and anxiety in general is likely due to its effects on GABA. So GABA is the primary inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain, and it plays a really crucial role in regulating nervous system activity, meaning that it helps to calm down the mind. GABA in the brain plays a role in regulating anxiety levels, and low levels of GABA are often associated with increased anxiety, while high levels of GABA are linked to feelings of calm and relaxation. Now, it's also an important for sleep regulation. It helps to induce sleep and improve sleep quality, making it easier to relax and fall asleep. It can also help to prevent muscle spasms and tension. We have GABA receptors all over the body, including in the muscles, and it's also associated with balanced mood. So passion flower increases GABA. And because of that, it's really beneficial for the uncomfortable symptoms of clinical anxiety. Things like intrusive thoughts, circular thinking, rumination, overthinking, racing mind, all of those mental health symptoms that get in the way of just living our lives comfortably. And I like to think of it as the off switch from when we just can't get the mind to stop thinking and being overwhelming. Now, before we get into how to take passion flower, I want you to know that depending on where you live, you can actually just grow it yourself or even find it growing wild. So passion flower thrives in well-drained soil and it likes full sun to partial shade. It's a climbing vine and it will go wild. So providing some sort of trellis or fence for it to grow on is important. You will have to monitor its growth. When I have garden space, I like to let it just grow wild. And then a few times a season, I will cut it back and use the cuttings for medicine when I'm able to grow it. You can start it from seed, but it takes a little bit of time to germinate. So you have to be patient. If you can try to get it from a friend or order it online and transplant it, making sure to water it really well until it's actually rooted. And once it's rooted, it's going to be kind of hard to get rid of because it will keep shooting up all over the garden. So make sure that you don't have it in a place where you want other plants to be happy. Give it its own dedicated space and be prepared for it to take off. It can sometimes take a few years to start blooming and producing flowers, which is an indication that it is also producing medicinal quality leaves and vines. But I've actually started seeing it producing flowers in its first season, so it could take less time you think. And if you have space to grow it, 
absolutely do that because it's such a valuable medicine, especially if you are in agricultural zones six to 10. Now you also can wild craft passion flower. I have seen it grow wild in places in Florida and I've heard it also grows wild in Georgia. And make sure that if you find it or if you're gonna grow it, it's actually Passiflora incarnata. I have seen another variety, Passiflora edulis, grow pretty wild where I live. And as beautiful and as exciting as it is to have passion flower plants, in my experience, it just doesn't have the same anxiolytic effect that Passiflora incarnata has. You are likely to find passion flower varieties at places like Home Depot and Lowe's, but again, those are not likely to be the medicinal variety. So when you are buying seeds or seedlings, just make sure it is Passiflora incarnata. Okay, so how do we use passion flower? We can work with passion flower as a tea or as a tincture. To make a passion flower tea, we're gonna add about one teaspoon per cup of hot water. So here I have a two cup mason jar. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of dried passion flower, cover it with two cups of boiling water, and I'm gonna steep this probably for about 45 minutes, then you're gonna strain it and you're gonna drink it. And of course you can add sweeteners, you can add flavorings, you can add a little bit of milk. You can also add lemon or other things to enhance the taste of the tea. Now I like passion flower tea as part of a bedtime or an anti-anxiety blend, but if you are really dealing with regular stress and anxiety symptoms, I suggest it as a tincture. And what's really cool about passion flower is that we can use it fresh or dried to make a tincture. If you have access to fresh flowering passion flower, gather a bunch of that fresh herb, combine it at a one to ratio with alcohol. So 100 grams of passion flower and 200 milliliters of alcohol. You can chop this up really fine to make that work. But personally, I would just put it all in a blender to increase the surface area and to decrease the time it takes to get a strong tincture from like four to six weeks to three to four weeks. And I will likely speed the process up by giving it a few hot water baths as well to make a really nice strong tincture. Now, if you don't have access to fresh passion flower, no problem you can just use dried passion flower and it will still make a really effective medicine, which is so convenient. So just use a one to five ratio, adding one part herb to five parts alcohol by weight and volume. So 100 milligrams of dried passion flower to 500 milliliters of alcohol. Again, I would suggest blending this to increase the surface area and making it a little bit stronger by giving it a hot water bath. And then after four weeks or so, straining and bottling this, and then you have a whole bunch of passion flowers to take as you need it. Now for a tincture, you're gonna wanna use about one to three dropperfuls of tincture as needed throughout the day. If you're having really strong active symptoms, I suggest taking one to two dropperfuls every 15 minutes and until your symptoms subside, which I usually notice takes about two to three doses for most people. You can also take it every 15 to 20 minutes to promote sleepiness at night. And if you wake up in the middle of the night, it's again, really helpful to keep by your bedside to help you fall back to sleep, especially if you have trouble falling back asleep because your mind won't turn off. So passion flower is a pretty safe herb and it can be taken even if you are on most mental health medications for anxiety and depression without any interaction but it will interact with sedative medications like benzos and barbiturates. It can also increase the amount of time it takes for blood to clot. So be very careful if you're on blood thinners and maybe consider another option. And then finally, it does seem to interact negatively with MAOIs, increasing their effects. So fortunately, not many people are on MAOIs anymore, but just in case you are, probably choose another option. Now, if you plan to bring passion flower into your life, as with any herbal remedy, be sure that you do a quick quick little Google cursory search to make sure that there are no surprise contraindications and interactions with any conditions or medications that you have or that you are on so that you stay happy and healthy and super safe. And if you give passion flower a try and you love it, let me know. I love hearing your success stories when you bring plant medicine into your life. And if you don't love it, also let me know that. It's really good information to hear how people felt when they experience was positive or negative. And then of course, just use herbs at your own risk. Now, if you found this video helpful, 
be sure to subscribe and follow so that you don't miss out on any episodes. And if there is another herb or remedy that you really want to learn about, leave that in the comments so that I know to cover it. And until then, thank you so much for being here. Stay calm, herb on, and yeah, I think that's it for me today. Okay, I love you. Bye.